Hey everyone, uh, my name is Calvin and welcome to my Procreate tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to paint a really simple uh, misty mountain scene. I think I want to show this process to you guys because for a complicated scene it's actually so easy to do and it's one of those projects kind of like the ice cream cone where it just kind of jumps into existence uh, and it's just super satisfying. So the first thing I'll do is just start out with the blank watercolor paper texture and I'm going to do all of this pretty much with the abstract round brush so I'm just going to use the normal brush set. Both of those I'll put links to uh, in the description. So this is a scene you wouldn't have to start out with a sketch, but just because I want to get it right for the video, I will do a sketch real quick. And uh, I'll make a new layer to start painting on, and I'm going to use the abstract round brush. And I'll select a kind of bluish green color, I think something like that will work, and a pretty big size, and I'll just fill this out really quickly. And once I've got that first layer on, I'm just going to grab a darker version and just do some random dark spots. Uh, and then I'll also choose that darker color, maybe a little bit more towards blue, and just do a few of these kind of bluish dots. I just want to add some color variation because next I'm going to grab the uh, water blender and just blend everything together to soften it up. There, so after I've blended everything together, you can see it has these uh, slightly darker areas and that does add some more interest to the mountains. One thing I want to explain in this video is mountains, especially mountains covered in trees, like a jungly mountain like this, the further away they get, the more sort of faded, desaturated, and almost blue that they get. So I'm going to use my little ombre trick here and sort of fake that effect. So I'll grab my selection tool, set it to freehand, and I'll just select maybe this part of the mountain. And then if I feather out that selection quite a bit, I can go to the hue, saturation, and brightness and uh, brighten the color to sort of fade it out a bit. I'll desaturate it and then also shift it a little bit towards blue. And that can kind of fake this sort of distant mountain effect. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, now I want to do the clouds or the mist. And uh, usually I do it on the same layer, but actually I want to show you a trick with the clouds and some of the advantages you can get if you do them on a different layer. So I'll make a new layer above the mountains I just painted and I'll select pure white. And uh, I'll grab the abstract round brush again and I'll just draw white in a few areas, just where clouds are kind of laying on the mountain, and especially on the very tops of the mountain as well, that's important. And then down here, I'll just completely white it out. And uh, if I grab the Blender tool, I can just soften all these just a little bit like this. And when I soften them, I tried to pull them from side to side and also kind of give them this sort of wiggly pattern like that. Now I want to give the illusion of different levels of the mountain sort of covering the mist. So a trick for that is uh, if I zoom in here and grab my eraser tool, uh, I'm going to set the eraser tool to the fine liner pen. And at the largest size, uh, watch what happens if I erase the bottoms of some of these clouds. So somehow when you erase the bottom of the clouds, it does give it the illusion that there's multiple layers to the mountain. Now I do recommend going over it again with the water blender and just softening a few of those areas. There we go, so I've softened up some of the edges there and uh, now we can work on the bottom of the scene here. And remember when I did all this cloud down here? Uh, I'm just gonna soften the edge of that and uh, also do the trick I did in my previous videos where I kind of rise up the mist like this. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and merge those two layers. So now the clouds have been flattened together with the mountain layer. And I think at this point I can turn off the sketch. Now to add some detail to the bottom of the scene, uh, I'm gonna grab the selection tool and I'm just gonna draw some sort of soft hill shapes here like this. And then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll darken that and make it a little bit more blue just so I get some contrast in there. And that's pretty much it for the background scene. And you do notice uh, the clouds did get kind of dark and gray where they overlapped. So I'll just use the eraser brush and just sort of clean up the edge down here. There we go. So that's it for the background scene. I'll make a new layer on top and do the very close foreground. So let me grab the uh, abstract round brush and I'll do the palm fronds first. So let me select a pretty dark bluish green color, I think something like that. And I'll just do some simple palm fronds like this just randomly kind of 
uh, framing in the scene here. And then I'll carefully go over, maybe at a little bit of a bigger size, I'll carefully add the uh, leaves to these palm fronds. So these ended up looking a little bit flat, so I'll just grab the water blender real quick and just quickly blend up some of these areas where there's a lot of leaves coming together. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to make a random selection and add some kind of dark blue color in there. So I just made this random selection like that, and I'll feather it out and then go to the hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll darken it just a little bit, and then add a little bit of blue to that. Now I'm gonna do some detail down here at the bottom, and uh, this'll be really simple. I think I'll just use the uh, abstract round brush, and maybe a dark green color, I think. I think something like that'll work. Uh, and I'll just go over the bottom of the scene, and just dab on some of this dark green like that. Uh, and then I'll go over it again, in a little bit of a darker version of that same color just randomly spot it on. Uh, then I can use the water blender to just kind of mix it up a little bit. And I will use the eraser to just sort of clean up that bottom edge. So almost done. I want to add some variation to the bottom of this as well. So I'll use that freehand selection tool and just make a selection like that. I'll feather it out a bit, hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just brighten it up a little bit, maybe shift the hue. There we go. I think that looks a little bit more interesting, a little bit more authentic. Uh, and now as a kind of final touch, I want to add in some flowers. So let me zoom in here, and I'll select pretty much a pure white color, uh, and then the abstract round brush, pretty small size, and I'll just do some really simple uh, five-pointed flowers like that. And I'll, I will do a few also from the side, just like that. And uh, to add some detail to those, I'll add some sort of black dots in there, but first I want to go in uh, with the water blender and just sort of blend in some of those uh, hard edges that I don't like. There we go, so I'll grab a really dark black, and I think I'll use the fine liner pen, pretty small size, and I'll just go in there, and I'll try to dot in some kind of circles of these black dots. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. Um, maybe as a final touch, I'll go to, maybe I'll just realign this layer a little bit. There we go, and then I'll erase the edge where it sort of goes over. Uh, and then I'll go to the very back scene, the mountain scene here, and using that freehand selection tool, I'll just make a random selection uh, like this, feather it out, and just add in some sort of nice color variation with the uh, hue, saturation, and brightness. And there we go. That's how I paint a very simple, very quick kind of misty mountain scene. A little bit of a different style than my uh, previous kind of mountain paintings, but let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And uh, also let me know what you think of this format as well, because I really do like filming my videos this way, but I want to see what you guys think first. So that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, thank you all so much for your support. Thanks for watching these videos, and I'll see you in the next one.